A great speech is a window to history. It captures the truth and the spirit of its age. We are familiar with many famous speeches which have played a significant and historic role. Speeches that have in fact changed the course of history in many lands at various points of time. Think of the greater speeches that you have heard about or probably heard or read about. Speeches made by great leaders ranging from Jesus Christ to Abraham Lincoln to Martin Luther King to great leaders at various points of time in India. Dear students, to that great list of uh, speeches, to that list of great speeches, you can add this one too, the one that's prescribed for your study, delivered by the British playwright Harold Pinter in the year 2005. It was a Nobel Prize acceptance speech. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 2005 and Pinter being unable to travel to Sweden to receive the award made a recording of a speech while he was in hospital and that was what was delivered as his Nobel Prize acceptance speech. Pinter's speech titled Art, Truth and Politics is a powerful plea for truth. It is a strongly worded political statement in which he makes a passionate appeal for political resistance to war and militarism, particularly the militarism unleashed by the United States of America in various parts of the world. The speech also conveys Pinter's great concern for the victims of oppression. However, before we get into the speech itself, it would be ideal if we take a look at Harold Plin Pinter, the playwright, one of the most eminent among the playwrights of the 20th century. His plays capture the uh, complex and challenging post-Second World War era. He is the author of about 29 plays and uh, many screenplays for movies. Among his major plays are The Dumb Waiter, The Birthday Party and The Caretaker. Plays, uh, ex the, you know, all of his plays explore the, 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 the anxiety of life as it was lived in the second half of the 20th century with lines that are sharp and terse and laced with a kind of threat or a kind of menace. His plays have really <clears throat> opened the windows to the claustrophobia and the unease that was characteristic of life in the post-Second World War era. Pinter's plays are generally considered as comedies of menace. That is, plays which convey the sense of menace, the danger, the threat, the terror, even in the most ordinary of situations. Power can be considered as the theme of most of Pinter's plays. The play of domination and submission, which is hidden in every act of us, in every speech that we utter, is, you know, what Pinter conveys through his plays. That is why they are called comedies of menace. His plays are also uh, well known for their heavy silences, heavy and dark silences. And these uh, silences are known as pinterpause, you know, pinterpause, the unsaid things that 
speak so much the long silences as powerful as are the uh, terse and sharp lines the dialogues in his plays equally powerful are the long silences or the pauses which speak aloud they convey the uh, the characters motivations their personalities and the their relationship with each other so the pinter pause is a significant part of pinter's plays another term that is commonly associated with his plays is the pinteresque you know it refers to the strange uh, and almost um, undefinable mysterious uh, quality in his plays each one of his plays uh, presents a kind of mysterious situation which is uh, heavy with a kind of menace you cannot pinpoint the source of the terror nor can you explain it rationally but there is some kind of danger some kind of threat some kind of fear that is always hanging in the air in his plays so the dialogues may be at the same time very funny very ordinary and also extremely threatening and menacing at the same time so i have uh, presented in the slide a few images from his uh, plays and in the next uh, slide you can watch a short uh, bit of his play the birthday party where you have the central character who is being interrogated by two strangers for no obvious reason at all it really brings out that element of fear which is what is conveyed by the term the pinteresque yesterday yesterday and the day before what did you do the day before that Why are you wasting everybody's time? Why are you getting me every day? Hey, I'm telling you, wait. Well, watch out. Why are you getting on everybody's way? Why are you driving that old lady off her cunt? She likes to do. Why do you behave so bad? Why do you force that old man out to play chess? Hey, why do you treat that young lady like a leper? She's not a leper. What? What did you wear last week, Weber? Where do you keep your suits? Why did you leave the organization? What would your old mum say? Why did you threaten me? You hurt me, Weber. You're playing a dirty game. It's a black and tan fact. Who does he think he is? Who do you think you are? You're on the wrong road. When did you come to this place? Last year. Where did you come from? Somewhere else. Why did you come here? My feet hurt. Why did you stay? Had a headache. Did you take anything for it? Yes. What? Boot soles? He knows our auntie. Did, uh, did you stir properly? Did they fizz? No. Uh, did they fizz? Wait. Did they fizz or didn't they fizz? He doesn't know. We don't know. When did you last have a bath? I have one every day. Don't lie. Time. You'll betray the organization. I know it. You don't. How can you see without your glasses? Anything? Take off his glasses. Weber, you're a fake. When did you last wash up a cup? Where? Right, not a house. Which one? All the light. Where was your wife? What's that? What wife? What have you done to your wife? Kill his wife. Why did you kill your wife? What wife? How did he kill her? How did you kill her? You throttled her. Last. Where's your man? Where's your old mum? In the sanatorium. Yes. Why did you never get married? She was waiting at the porch. He skedaddled from the wedding. He left her in the lurch. He left her in the pudding cloud. She was waiting at the church. Weber, why did you change your name? I forgot the other one. What's your name now? Joe Soap. You stink of sin. I can smell it. Do you recognize an external force? 
What? Do you recognize an external force? That's the question. Do you recognize an external force? Responsible for you. Suffering for you. It's late. Late, right. late enough. When did you last pray? He's sweating. When did you last pray? He's sweating. Is the number 846 possible or necessary? No. Wrong. No. Is the number 846 possible or necessary? Both. Wrong. It is necessary but not possible. Oh, no. No. Why do you think that? So what we have seen is the way in which the central character Stanley is interrogated by the two strangers, Goldberg and Mekin. You know, Stanley is given no opportunity to respond in a way that he would want to. And even when he does, his responses are unacceptable to Mekin and Goldberg. It comes to a point where they declare that he you know, they tell him, you are dead. We, the audience, can see that Stanley is very much alive, but he does not even have the control over his own life, over his own reality, to make a factual protest and to say that he's alive. Such a situation does not arise at all. What you have throughout this play and most of the other plays of Pinter is such situations where you know, language is used not just to express oneself, but more importantly, to suppress others, to uh, prevent them from expressing themselves. So this is a very, very significant feature of Pinter's theatre, his plays in general. And what is significant is that in his Nobel speech, this is precisely what he wants to convey. The power that certain uh, forces, certain groups, certain people, certain institutions and countries exert in order to suppress others using language. I will conclude this presentation here by just summarizing for you what the speech tries to convey. It suggests that both art and politics can use and manipulate the truth through the manipulation of language, but the consequences are entirely different. In works of art, the manipulation of truth leads to an aesthetic end, but in reality, in the political field, the manipulation of truth can lead to disastrous consequences, especially for those who are oppressed. So this is what I will explain uh, with the help of the text in the next presentation.